Jeff Greenberg. And I want to talk to you about one of the most controversial, maybe, one of the least used features by editors, and that's what's known as an asymmetrical trim. It's least used because it's probably the least understood of features in trimming, and yet it has some great hidden power. So take a look at this timeline here. I've removed any of the audio information. I've removed the, the, this from this little sting of music. I removed its waveform. I don't think you need to see those to understand what I want to talk about. I'm going to go ahead here and give you an early explanation of what I want to do. I want to be able to shorten this clip on the right, but I want this piece of music to stay with it. And that's what asymmetrical trimming is going to do for us. By letting us tri choose where our trim rollers go and putting them on different sides of this trim right here, we're going to be able to make an audio clip stick with a different part of the sequence than it was built for. Let's first understand the way it's meant to work. When I click here, and I lengthen or I shorten the shot on the left, the audio doesn't go with it. It sticks to the shot on the left. It has no correspondence to the shot on the right. And that's because of the simple reason that the beginning of this clip occurs during this clip. We could conceivably hold down the shift key and add a roller over here, add a ripple over here. And now when we make things longer or shorter, we're actually lengthening the empty space in and of itself. Okay, that's great. We've now got it attached to this side of the clip. Well, that's fine if I want to shorten this side. But what if I want to do something that you might think is impossible? I might want to shorten this side. And instead of shortening my music sting, I want to shorten or lengthen the opposite side of it to keep the sting in sync with this. And this is like this sort of situation here. This is the outgoing stinger of our show and it's got a couple frames of black against it and this is the end of a segment of uh, uh, of a program that's going to be broadcast so this is going to be the end segment and I need this to start right at the spot where the, the the markers are I have them there so you can see what will happen if they're done wrong so I'm gonna go ahead and make this a right-sided trim I'll hold down the shift key and notice when I shorten this it shortens everything and everything comes up. That's great. Undo. But I don't want to mess up the head of this shot. So I'm going to hold down this shift key. Now as long as you understand that, and, and I've selected the left side, as long as you understand that I'm shortening items on both sides, it's going to be like an interlocking puzzle. And as I drag, you can see it's doing the work asymmetrically. It's shortening everything on the right, the same time it's shortening the left. That pensive guitar those markers will stay perfectly lined up and I don't have to play the game. The game, by the way, you would have to play is actually making the markers, adjusting the trim. Let's do it without the symmetrical trim here, making an adjustment here and then grabbing this and moving it. And while it's really simple in this one situation, when you've got four or five or six more, more tracks, being able to selectively add trim rollers, add ripple trims to the correct side and shorten and lengthen becomes a very powerful editorial skill.